everyone, and welcome back to Liftoff. Over the years, NASA has been working on landing on the moon once again. This is a plan that's been there for a couple of years now, and it's still in development. This entire project includes something that they refer to as the Lunar Gateway. If this mission is successful, it will have been more than 50 years since the last moon landing. This will undoubtedly alter the course of history, as there are plans to create interplanetary life. It was recently discovered that NASA might just have to cancel the Lunar Gateway, which they've been planning for years now. But why would they have to do this? Well, according to a leaked NASA document, there's some good news and some bad news regarding the Artemis Return to the Moon program. This was revealed by a recent article in Ars Technica. The bad news is that owing primarily to the cost associated with the construction of the Lunar Gateway, the pace of the Artemis mission to the Moon is slowing to an unsustainable crawl. This includes years between flights and the establishment of a lunar base, which was pushed off to the 2030s. However, there is some good news. Despite this, it seems that by canceling the Lunar Gateway, NASA might just find the solution to some of their problems. Before we continue, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more updates on Elon Musk, SpaceX, Tesla, science technology, and so much more. The Lunar Gateway was once referred to as the Deep Space Gateway, came into the picture during the Obama administration. Since then, it's been referred to as the Lunar Orbital Platform Gateway, before it became called the Lunar Gateway. It is planned for an elliptical lunar orbit. As the name suggests, its main aim is to serve as a gateway to the lunar surface. Most of the astronauts who will be aboard the Orion, which is the spacecraft carrying the people, will have to dock at the Lunar Gateway. After docking, they will be put on a human landing system, HLS, which will then take them the rest of the way from the Lunar Gateway to the surface of the Moon. NASA chose to keep the gateway and change it mainly for the Artemis mission. This decision was made after the agency discovered the Orion could not enter low lunar orbit, and if it did, it would not be able to depart from the surface. The Orion is capable of docking with the lunar gateway in a higher elliptical polar orbit, which is about 3,000 kilometers, or about 1,865 miles above the lunar north pole, and about 70,000 kilometers, or about 43,500 miles above the lunar south pole. Before landing on the surface of the moon, the HLS will have departed from the lunar gateway. Once the astronauts on the surface are done with their mission, the HLS would then lift off and head back to the lunar gateway. Here, it would dock once again, and the crew would move to the Orion, which they would then use to come back to Earth. In this process, the lunar gateway would be used as a base, where the HLS would be refurbished and refueled. Even though this has already been planned out, Ars Technica suggests otherwise. According to the article, even with all the initial elements of the Lunar Gateway being launched on the commercial rocket SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, most of it will have to make use of the SLS in the late 2020s and early 2030s. However, because of the cost, the agency can only afford one launch per year at most. Because of this limitation, such an effort, according to NASA's revised schedules, will require most or all of the capacity of the SLS rocket during that time frame and it could preclude the agency from developing a greater focus on lunar surface activities. This simply means that expeditions to the lunar surface, including the building of a lunar base, have been delayed for several years now. According to Ars Technica, the problem with this solution is that last April, NASA selected SpaceX's Starship to serve as a lunar lander. According to the article, the Starship alone is larger than the proposed gateway, and it has all the same power as the gateway. Furthermore, the Starship is also capable of landing and launching from the lunar surface with ease. The article then goes on to ask, so if you already have Starship as part of your lunar architecture, and if NASA is already interested in activities on the lunar surface, why spend a decade and tens of billions of dollars building the gateway? And if you think about it, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. These are not the only issues that could potentially delay the whole process. Some other issues include space suits and the space launch system itself. The Space Launch System has recently received less than optimal wet dress rehearsal. However, when it comes to the Lunar Gateway, we would be required to answer a question, once asked by the engineer behind the development of the Lunar Rendezvous that took Americans to the Moon during the Apollo program. John Hobel asked, do we want to return to the Moon or not? If we do want to return to the Moon, then it's time that NASA cancel or at least defer the Lunar Gateway and get on with it. According to some of the scientists at NASA, the Lunar Gateway could possibly serve as a human-tended space station in orbit around the Moon. Furthermore, they could also use it to test the technologies that would ensure that the astronauts could survive the long voyage to Mars. Well, given the fact that the International Space Station already exists, and that there are several commercial space stations being planned, 
This argument seems quite far-fetched. However, on the other hand, if a space station was required to facilitate transport to Mars, then it might be a good idea to stop for a while and strategize, once again before proceeding with the launch for the return to the moon. For example, they could decide the SpaceX Starship could pose as a lunar gateway. Do you think NASA should cancel the development of Lunar Gateway, or do you think they should continue with its development? Feel free to let us know in the comments section below. When it comes to space race, it seems as though NASA is unbeatable. After all, they facilitated the mission that saw some men land on the moon. For quite some time now, the entire agency has been working on its next generation space transport system, which they plan to use to take crews to the moon once again. This will be the first time in more than half a century that men landed on the moon again. The entire program is named Artemis, which is the name of the twin sister of Apollo in Greek mythology. In addition to taking humans back to the surface of the moon, the project also aims at utilizing the moon as a stepping stone towards reaching Mars. The space agency is planning on landing humans on the lunar surface by 2025. However, this seems like a thinned out timeline with so much yet to do. This plan has even left thousands of people in shock and confused, with most of them wondering whether the agency is being blindly optimistic or if it is making some compromise to stick to the schedule. This is especially given the fact that the program has some large technical challenges and financial costs that are off the roof. Just to give you a clear picture of the finances they need, the Artemis spacesuits alone are said to cost about $1 billion. The entire project all the way through 2025 is estimated to come in at a total of $93 billion. The Gateway has also been criticized by Apollo 11 moonwalker Buzz Aldrin and the former NASA administrator Michael Griffin. According to Griffin, the Gateway will not really be useful until the lunar landings are a reality once more. However, for now, the Gateway is still in the planning stages of being launched, and it is speculated that it will be launched sometime in November of 2024. But even with this, there may be a change at any time. NASA has become very eager to make the Artemis program a success, seeking out all options to make it work. However, the agency has had a lot of factors that have caused it some major delays, with the main one being the pandemic. The related supply chain issues have also proven to be a headache for the agency, but in the next five or so years, we might just see the agency's success after they've taken people to the moon. What do you think of the Artemis program? Do you think it will be successful? Feel free to let us know in the comments section below. Also, before you go, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more updates on Elon Musk, SpaceX, Tesla, science technology, and so much more. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.